kind of bad for the wall, but it's okay. All right, this is like my sixth take, but it's all right. So today we're doing a video. I know it's surprising, but you're here already, so you shouldn't be surprised. Today is a movie review. Um, now I've actually been wanting to do movie reviews for a while, but you kind of need to do scripts for that, which I haven't done because it takes a long, long time to write the script and get all your thoughts out. And also, I'm not very good at reading scripts. It just sounds scripted. But anyway, this video is not scripted. Believe you me. Uh, and that'll show throughout the video. Today we're talking about Sinister. It's a scary movie, spooky movie. I know spooky season just passed a week ago as of recording this. Who knows when this video comes out. And the, but, you know, it's just passed and, and the skeleton back there is looking mournfully off at the shadow that's cast from the thing on the ceiling, whatever that thing is. It's like a fan or something. I don't think it's a fan. Sinister is a very scary movie in my opinion. And I think a lot of people would agree with me. If you haven't seen the movie, I would recommend that you go watch this, turn the lights off, watch it at night. You might want to watch it with someone else, that's what I did. Not really intentionally, but yeah, just watch it. If you can't be bothered to watch this movie and just want to know what it's about, well, I'll tell you what it's about. It's about a family. They move into a house. Uh, the family's father, whose name is Ellison Oswalt, uh, he's a true crime writer. Uh, he moves into this house where apparently there was a family that was just killed recently. And uh, the rest of the family doesn't know it. Uh, yeah, he's, he's just, he's a smart person. He takes his family to this house, he discovers these Super 8 films, he watches them throughout the movie, and they're all, they're all films that start out very lovely. They, they start out with a, a family just having fun doing something around, and then it hard cuts to a family getting gruesomely murdered in various ways. And all of these films actually have funny names, like, you know, one of them is called family pool party. It consists of the family getting tied down to these chairs uh, with weights attached to them and just getting thrown into the pool. <laughs> and there's another one called barbecue or BBQ and the family's just trapped in a car that gets set on fire and they're just left to burn. There's another one that's called family <laughs> family hanging out. <laughs> uh, if you can't guess what that one's about, it's about a family hanging out from a tree. And then there's another one that's just lawnmower work, which is, you know, just a lawnmower going over grass. And then eventually it goes over these people's face. You can't see it though, because that'd be too gruesome. But it's a good jump scare. Anyway, he watches all these films, and uh, he's really disturbed by them. Every time he sees something scary, he's like, oh. That was whiskey, by the way. So he watches all these films throughout the movie, and in between the times he's watching these, uh, he, he wants to investigate all these murders, and so he teams up with Deputy to find out where these murders happened and when. So he discovers the locations of all these murders and the unsolved cases. Apparently, from every murder, the whole family was killed and then one child just disappeared. Throughout all the films, he also discovers these weird symbols, which he teams up with a professor to find out what they are. And apparently, they belong to a, an obscure pagan deity dating back to Babylon, apparently. He's like, yeah, I think this is like a cult initiation that spans decades or something. I don't know, it's really weird. So, uh, some other weird stuff also happens around his home. Like, he hears sounds, um, there are ghost children, and, uh, his son starts behaving weirdly. Like, at night, he'll, uh, there's one part where he pops out of a box, like a jack-in-the-box, and starts screaming. He's also shirtless. He also looks like a punk, but that's beside the point. Apparently, he has troubles with sleepwalking. It's really weird. A bunch of weird stuff happens. He continually gets spooked out. Like the deputy comes to visit him at one point and like Allison is just sitting there on the couch and he's, he's really shaken. And so eventually the wife slash mother finds out that the house is formerly the house of a family who was just murdered. And so she's like, I asked you, I asked you if you, you were living in the house you and you said no. Me. They had quite a bit of a disagreement because he's a true crime writer and he made like one book and was famous for like five seconds and now he's just kind of on the back end of his career so he wants to do that one thing that'll get him fame again. He potentially put his family's life in danger by doing so. It's not like we're sleeping where somebody was killed. It's not like they had to wipe blood off the walls oh, for the open wait, house. Wait, so saying it didn't happen here? No! It, it happened in the backyard. Oh, that is so so good! And so his wife tells him that. He's just kind of confronted with what he's done. Weird stuff continues to happen. 
At one point, all the ghost children lead him into the attic where one of the films is playing. This weird demon-like guy comes up on the film, and then BOO! He jumps out, and Oswald is, uh, Ellison, I'm sorry, Ellison Oswald is so scared that he runs down, burns all the films like that ever works. He wakes up all his family because it's in the middle of the night, and he says, pack up, we're going back home. And so they do. They pack up all their stuff, and they go back home. The end. Except it's not actually. Because after that, he gets called by someone and they're like, yeah, you can't leave the house because all of the murders happened after the family moved into the house where someone else was murdered and then moved out of the house somewhere else. So he discovers that too late and then he discovers the box of tapes. They're in pristine condition once again. Only this time they say extended cut. So he takes out the tapes, watches them again, and uh, it's the same thing as before, only this time at the end, instead of just ending, the person holding the camera walks out and you discover that the person holding the camera throughout all of them was the missing child. Then he looks down at his coffee mug and he sees this weird green stuff. And then he looks down at a piece of paper that says, Good night, daddy. And so he gets knocked out, and then he wakes up, and he's tied down. And his, his little daughter is standing there holding an axe. Allison's just kind of laying there helpless, looking at his daughter. And then the daughter kills him. And then she walks upstairs, where she sees the demon guy, whose name is actually Bagul. And uh, all the children are there, and Mr. Bagul picks her up, and then just walks away with her. And then the final scene in the movie is just, uh, the camera's in the attic and it just kind of focuses on the box of tapes. And then, BANG! Mr. Bagul jumps out and scares me one last time. So yeah, that's the movie. I didn't really do it that much justice with my little description of it. It wasn't that little, it was probably like half the video if I'm being honest with myself. More. More than half. So, I liked this movie a lot. It was very scary. It had a bad ending, of course. Um, I, I actually don't really like bad endings, but it was, I mean, it was effective. It's scary. It's, bad endings are more scary, obviously. I just don't like the feeling they leave you with, but I still like this movie a lot. Now, since I like this movie a lot, I'll go over the things I didn't like about it. I mentioned earlier, there was the scene with the, the ghost children. I didn't like it because it was just kind of the main character, Allison, he was walking around his home, he was holding a bat, and the ghost children, who he couldn't see, were just kind of walking around him. They were like... <laughs> they're kind of cringy, to be honest. And I didn't really like it, because it kind of took away from the mystery, and the intrigue, and just you, leaving it up to your imagination. Yeah, that's like the only thing that I would critique it with. Like I said, I don't like bad endings, but I don't think I would change this movie because this movie wouldn't be able to work as well without a bad, bad ending. So what I really liked about the movie was uh, obviously the, the mystery, the terror. Terror is creating the suspense and the atmosphere, which is the most effective, I believe. Uh, and I really like horror that relies on terror. So there's a lot of terror throughout the, the movie. There's a lot of mystery, too. The whole, the whole movie is driven by the mystery of Ellison trying to solve these murders and find out what happened. There were a lot of little things I didn't mention, like there were drawings of all the murders that the children had made. Apparently every time you took a picture of Bagul, he lived in the picture. So there was one part where Ellison was looking over his computer and uh, there was a picture of Bagul right next to him. So when he looked away, the picture of Bagul just like started moving. I don't know, maybe it was a little cheesy, but I think it, I think it was nice. I really liked the movie, and uh, just the, the ending, the ending part was really effective because this whole time he was out for glory, like I said. He, he moved into this house because he wanted to write that book that would make him famous again. And so he's, he's gambling his family's safety for it. The more he finds out about this mystery, the more he's disturbed by it, and the more he begins to, to realize that some things are best left unsolved. He comes to that realization too late, of course. By the time he burns all the tapes, um, presumably his daughter has already watched all of them and come under the, the full influence of Bagul. So 
That leads him to make the mistake of leaving the house and going back to the old house, which is where the murder happens. And he just, he discovers, he discovers all the right stuff at the wrong time. And just like the final scene with, with Ellison as she's executing the family one by one, and he's just lying there like he's completely helpless. And you, the viewer, are completely helpless as she swings the axe and decapitates them. The whole movie creates this the sense of mystery and then terror and then despair and helplessness. It's just this dark feeling that the film leads you with. So yeah, that is why it is the scariest horror movie that I've ever watched so far. And I've watched The Conjuring. I'll probably talk about that in a different video. I really liked The Conjuring as well, but I don't know, I, I don't think it was as scary for some reason. Maybe I'll have to watch both of them again. And I found Sinister to be scarier than Conjuring to me. And uh, Sinister 2, that's a different horse. Let's get downstairs, Dylan. It, Sinister 2 expands on the lore in this movie, but in my opinion, I don't think that Sinister 2 should exist. <laughs> probably talk about that in another video as well. But yeah, I would recommend Sinister. It is, to me, one of the quintessential horror movies. It's very scary. Unfortunately, spooky season's already passed, so you should be already snuggling up with your turkey or something and getting ready for Thanksgiving. Some people are already decorating for Christmas. I think a lot of people. I think you should wait until the day after Thanksgiving at least. Yeah, just give Thanksgiving a chance, but also give Sinister a chance if you haven't already. If you've already seen the movie and you were watching me butcher it uh, throughout this video, good for you. Now get out of here. But if you haven't seen the movie, I recommend you go do so. Unfortunately, they just took it off, off of Netflix recently, which is where I watched it. They just have the second movie, which I wouldn't recommend watching the second movie if you haven't seen the first because then it's just confusing. And it also kind of might sour your taste of the series. But yeah, Sinister, for the last time I recommend it. If you don't like horror movies, yeah, don't watch it. But if you do, or if you want to give them a shot, go for it. That's about it. Thank you for watching. Oh my goodness. I just broke part of this thing. But it's okay. Thank you for watching. I hope this wasn't too long. Hopefully it won't be too long in editing. But yeah, it's about it. Goodbye, I'll see you next time. Oh, also, uh, yeah, Drew's here. He just wants to give his compliments to